All right, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you give us a like, subscribe, ring the bell, follow us on social media, and support us at Patreon and PayPal. Uh, today on the podcast, it's my honor to have Antonio Hickman, uh, God's Plan from the Raw Truth podcast. You can follow him on Spotify and uh, Instagram as well. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, tell me sir. a little bit about uh tell me a little bit about God's <clears throat> plan. Um I came up with the monarch because of the journey I've been on. Yeah. Um of going through a lot of things that the the adversity I faced and getting to a point to kind of fully start to understand life in a broader perspective. Um, so I had to look at, when I looked at that, that the adversity in the life that I had chosen to live, I'm not saying they do what I had chosen to live, and part of it being environment. Yeah. It got to a certain point of looking at myself of, I stopped asking the why question, the why me question to God. Like, why me? Why is this happening? Why is this going on? Because some things are meant to happen. Some things are to test you, to test you, to test, you know, because it, the, the test is a testimony, you know, to have a testimony about your life. Um, because I began to understand that I had a bigger purpose. So I uh, looked at myself as God's plan. You know, I, that's how I looked at myself. I'm, I'm part of God's plan. I'm just not the only one, but I just had that. I, I, I like the name. I like I'm God's plan because <clears throat> of the, the struggles that I had to deal with, or overcoming the struggles that I had to deal with, of looking at is it gonna, am I allowed certain things to break me or make me? And I just I decided to let it make me because it's easy to fall into a mindset of looking at everything negative. Oh, yeah. Easy. I mean... I'd even say that's like the default programming <laughs> of the brain. Right. The human experience. And, and and that's what people default. You're right. That's a default. It immediately people fall to, to that mindset. And I had made up my mind not to to live like that no more because... I went back and I looked at the things that I went through and that I made it through, and it was by the grace of God. Yeah, literally by the grace of God, and I and I truly feel that way. So, I was. It was funny that I was sitting talking to a friend and telling her the perspective and perceptions of life of how people choose to look at life. Their perception. I said I grew up in a neighborhood to where we can sit, both of us can sit and look at the same thing, the same thing that goes on and everything. And they'll, most people look at it, this is negative. This is some messed up stuff. Yeah. This is where I'm at. And I can sit back and I can look at it and it's like, what can I do to change it? What's the solution to it? What's the solution to self first and foremost? And now it's, and it starts there. You know, you can look at the environment, but... Are you gonna be part of it? How are you gonna change it? How are you gonna change yourself? How are you gonna look at yourself in a, you know, cause at the end of the day, it's all about, ref the reflection is you. Yeah. You know? So that's why God's plan for me is like, I had to reflect, I have to own my own shit, period. Yeah, and I always see that too. It's like, um, you know, people want big changes in the world, but I feel like the only thing you can really uh, change is, is yourself. It's this part right here. And the more you change this and the more you alter your own perception, the more beautiful of a place the world be, just becomes, right? You, the, you start removing these filters and these layers of, of conceptual reality. And then, you know, you recognize that you're like, oh, I've, I've always been hanging out in heaven. Right. You know, it was just my own bullshit getting in the way of me being able to perceive that. Indeed. Indeed. And I, I, it's, um, and that's it's, it's so much truth in that, you know, we come across a lot of people in the industry that we in, and we come across a lot of people in life, you know, that we sit in, sometimes have a conversation, just sometimes just, you know, it's just, you, it's a pass by situation, you know, it, it, it depends. And then it, it's interesting more so when you sit and get a chance to talk 
and to begin again to like have conversations with people. Yeah. And I think that for me, it's an enlightenment. You know, I I I have a, I think I, dang, for probably over twenty some years, I've had this paper called the Deserata. You familiar with the Deserata? No, tell me about it. The Deserata is a um, a declaration um, letter that was written back in like the 1400s, and it talks about God. It's like the first part go go placidly amid the noise and the haze, right? And uh, to, and to remember, even the dull and ignorant, they too have their story. Mm. And the way it opens up is powerful for me because. It goes on to tell you the things that we go through in life is meant. It's meant and it's choice. And so that's why I said the dull and the ignorant, they too have their story because everybody has a story. Yeah. Regardless of how you want to look at someone, there's a story there. And how it came about is the most fascinating part of it, you know? And, for, and it's not for us to judge. Yeah. It's not for us to judge. No, judgment is the um, the absence of love. You know, that's the absence of what we're truly here to do, which is just, you know, be loving and compassionate beings. And uh, when we walk around in judgment, you know, that's really losing that, that key factor yeah. of, you know, just loving each other. So, but, yeah, I, I fall into that trap all the time anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can, it's, and that's the, that's almost the simplicity part yeah. of it. You know, it's like the simplicity part of it. Um, I had a blessing to, I met this woman. <laughs> it's been four months. I met this woman, and it wasn't, I wasn't looking for it. I've been single for a while. And I saw her, and I knew I had to meet her. <laughs> And it's funny though, Jason, I met her, I saw her at BJ's. Yeah. And her friend saw me walk in, her best friend saw me walk in. And the story is that she saw me and she told her best friend, told Diane, woman, that he the one for you. So I sit down, I see her. I don't approach her because she's having lunch with her friend. But I'm looking at this woman, I'm like, I got to meet this woman. Don't say nothing to her, Jason. Yeah. We all we walked out at the same time. I sat in my car and I'm looking at them walk by. And I'm just like, I saw her laugh and everything. I said, this is the woman. The following day, it was on my niece's birthday, May 7th. I go to the Blue Martini. As soon as I walk into the Blue Martini, who's sitting there? She is. I'm like, what is the chances? of me seeing this woman again. And I introduced myself to when I told her that I saw her, this, this, and I walked away. The thing is, after we got, you know, we of course we still talking today. We literally, we've talked every day since and spent mostly all our time together. Mm -hmm. And I had a conversation with her and she was like, I've never, she's been reluctant to be in relationships, right? Yeah. Because of her past relationships. And I told her, about being assigned and being attached. Yeah. I said, there's a difference. I said, some people come in your life to be assigned to you. I said, that's the blessing. I said, that's the spiritual connection aspect of life. I said, it doesn't mean that it's a lifetime thing as far as being in a relationship with somebody, but it's a lifetime of a blessing. A blessing is a lifetime. You don't have to be with someone, you know, in a relationship with someone or what may have you to be assigned to him. Yeah. So I, I, you know, and for me, I, when I explained this to her in detail, she began to look at life a little bit differently. Um, I say this because it goes back to the God's plan thing. Yeah. That people come in your life, different parts of the season, what may have you. And the assignment part is, to see or to be able to deliver a message, not say you need to do this or you need to do that, is simply having an open heart 
and open mind and being sincere in what your intentions are. Of course, people look at life as like, what does this person want from me? What is this person trying to gain or what is this person trying to get from me? Yeah. Because nine times a ten, a lot of people feel that everything is taken and nothing is given. So I've showed her a different side because I've lived that life and I've like I told her my heart is open now. It's like I constantly work on myself every day. I'm not I'm flawed. And so my thing is I ask questions such as what is that you when what is it that you see when you look at me? What is it that you see that you feel I can change? Because sometimes I don't got to I don't got a problem asking those questions to have another perspe- perception or perspective of myself because I do it because I want to know how to get better. Yeah. You know, because sometimes in relationships we do certain things that sometimes can annoy our uh, partner, you know what I'm saying? So these are the things that you learn. You learn you learn about one another and to to be conscious of how you approach. Yeah. How you approach the person opposed to getting angry or dismissive or shutting down or it's the thing of uh, to be open to be to communicate more so with that person to have a better understanding so your your bond is much stronger. Yeah, you know? and I think a relationship is like one of the greatest teachers that we get in this lifetime because I think every every relationship that we have is a teacher, right? Every every person we meet is showing us something that we either you know it, like we can focus on the things that we don't like about a person and recognize that in ourselves and, and, uh, it helps guide us along, um, the path, but like with a partner, with your like intimate partner, those, those lessons are so much deeper and they're so much more a part of like who you are and your habit energy that you have. Um, and these daily things that you're going through that, you might be able to bullshit around with everybody else in your life, but not the person you're living with, right? Right. And, yeah, it's just such a valuable tool and such a valuable teacher whenever you're in a relationship, especially with somebody honestly, right? Right. Because we all have those relationships where, you know, it's more sexual and not honest and open like that, you know, that vibe where you can really be your true self in front of somebody and then they can be their true self in front of you and you can go from that place of, like, truth and work on each other right with each other definitely definitely and i think that's um that's important it's it's, it's so important to do so um because it's like i said we go back to the thing of just falling back it's easy to fall into something negative that's yeah. the that's the most simplest thing to do in life because things may not be going your way and it's where now for me i look at life in a whole different manner, like, ble- like when I say blessed, blessed. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know if I ever told you my background. Um, no, I'm telling you. Being, uh, you know, from the gang banging to stand in and out of institutions since the time I was ten years old. Yeah. You know, and you know, spending fourteen years in prison. You know, it's like. When I say blessed, I was one of the, the the ones that got it over a period of time. Like, I didn't want to live this life no more. And I seen constantly, like, while, in, while I was in prison, both my brothers got killed, you know. And I had to look. Then I, you know, people were dying, grandparents and things. And I was just like, I can't live this life no more. Yeah. I can't live. I, I just, I was, I was done. You know, I was done. And so fortunately, I was blessed to have like a wonderful mother. Like I, I'm, I'm thankful for of my mother because she's one of those mothers that never judged me, never talked bad to me, never made me feel down and nothing like that. So it was always her being there, like encouragement and stuff. So like I said, that's why I say I'm blessed with so many of these people that can't that's in my life that um that truly had my best interest at heart you know saw something i didn't see yeah so you know after doing all that time i literally walked away from that life like 
I was done. Even in even in prison, you know, guys talking about, you know, I'll do this, send you this, I'll write back, you know, and all that. And I was honest with a couple of my partners that I was close with in there. Yeah. And I'll see you when I get I'll see you when you get out. Yeah. But this life, the prison life, I'm done with. Period. Period. Because that's something I had to detach myself from altogether. Fuck yeah. All together, I had to detach myself in order to, for me to to um, to do what I needed to do, and and it's like everything that has transpired up to this point has been a blessing. It's been a blessing. I just changed my whole mindset, my whole work ethic of how I just looked at life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, our suffering is is our grace, man. You know, that's the thing that builds us up, and it's without. All that suffering in our past, we wouldn't be as strong as we are today. Yeah, it's, it's always the case. That, you know, the more that the world throws at you, the stronger it needs you to be in the future. That's all. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just there's something big coming that you got to handle, and it'll get you there. Oh, without uh, question. I don't think you know we we go kicking or screaming. You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen. So it's better to accept and embrace and surrender to the process. Yeah, allow it to be. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a hell of a ride, man. But I'm glad to hear that you're not out fucking around, gang banging no more. That shit is just no good, man. No good for anybody. It takes everybody away from us. You know that life. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people lose their life. A yeah. lot of people lose their life in that. Um, and. It's, it's crazy. Even at a young age, though, Jason, I felt I different. Even though I lived a life, I felt different. Like, yeah. this is not my place. This is not my place. I've always, you know, went, I, I, I traveled. Even when I was young, sometimes my mom used to get mad at me because even at a young age, I would get up and go without even permission. She was like, where you at? Well, I'm, in this, I'm here in this state. And she was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it was just one of them things I felt at times compelled to get away. Yeah. I felt trapped all the time. I just felt trapped. And, you know, I used to write. That was my outlet. I, you know, I still do, but my outlet was writing. And I got good at it. Um, I remember writing um, a poetry. I was like 15 years old, and I wrote The Cage. It was just called The Cage. Yeah. And I would even, you know, it's like you don't have to be locked up to be in a cage. No. You know, I mean, I was just like I felt so trapped. It's like it was just I felt like I was in walls. Yeah. And I'm, you know, walking around, breathing fresh air, or seeing people, but I was locked up. Yeah. I was locked up. And it put me in a place of... Um, a lot of dissension, um, resentment towards people, you know, towards certain people. And it was, as I got older, that was an excuse. Yeah. You know, it was that was an excuse when you look at it and stuff, because it, you, when you look at it, you're the product. <laughs> <laughs> you're the product. You're like, yeah, I'm yeah. the product. I, how do I fix this? Yeah. You know? It's no different. It's no different from when somebody's uh, somebody running the business and stuff, and the branding is not is not good, and they don't know how to, and they they not making sales. Their their sales is dropped, and it's like, then you bring somebody in that know that got an idea. Like, here, let me click this light bulb on for you. Yeah, because we, you know, we spend most of our youth um, just getting programmed to thinking that we're real by right. people that think <laughs> that they're real, right? And uh, it it kind of traps us in this soul prison that we find ourselves caught in all the time, man. Um, and yeah, it can just turn into a living hell. I mean, I was, I, I personally was the same way when I was 15 years old, just, you know, trapped by this game we're caught in, you know, whatever we want to refer to this illusion of Maya that, that we, our our consciousness is currently occupied, right? <laughs> in, 
uh it, but you know coming to terms with that takes a long time and like yeah when we're, when i was a teenager it was a mess i i couldn't make make sense of anything man and it just made me lash out at people a lot and, right yeah it took decades to come to terms with with that that ridiculous illusion i was getting caught in mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's real and now that i got kids that's one of the things i try to get them to understand about me and i tell them i said you know my job is to plant a seed yeah my, my job is to plant a seed and hopefully you know once i do that you yourself as an individual begin to nurture it I only have you for a certain amount of time because at some point you become your own responsibility yeah you know and I, and I tell them that you become your own responsibility you, you gonna find the do's and don'ts the likes and so forth that whatever may tickle your fancy I said but at the same time I want y'all to be to have a good heart don't let the, I said the world is not a bad place I said it's the people in this world that makes makes it a bad place. Yeah. I said because we can go to I can take you to different places in this in this world and it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. Where there you won't hear not a sound, you won't hear a car a, a car horn hunk or anything like that. That's the beauty of it. And it's, it and it, and it, 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 it exists. All these other things that are around you, like you said, it's the program. You hey. You need product, you need this, you need that to fit yeah. in type of thing. So it's the programming aspect that I try to get them away from and make it simple for them. It's cool to have nice things, but be grounded, be humble in doing so. So, and to appreciate what it is that you've been blessed with. A lot of people don't appreciate what they have. Yeah, they're too close to it. Yeah. There's no gratefulness or anything to say... I'm blessed and to give a give back yeah to give back and I keep my I try to keep my daughters my sons um, I have two girls two boys my oldest son 30 he he's, he's getting it now because he had to go through the trials and tribulations yeah of things and so when he turned 18 it was one of them things hey dad I'm okay you go here do your do I said because I'm not it ain't my my job here now to stop you as because as i had to learn so do you yeah so either it's gonna make you or break you your decision so now he's at a state where he gets it he's done, he's come down a lot <laughs> <laughs> he's he, he's come down a lot so um i tell him it's you try to be a road map, yeah. you know, because you, we go through it, you know. I've been through some stuff, and I try to be a road map for, for them. And so I said, look, I took my mom through things, and now I get it as a parent. So it's one of them things to where, hey, if you don't want to listen, you're going to learn. It's, it's the hard way. You know, it's the hard way. And you're going to have those anyway. You're going to have those hard times to test you. So, um, and I tell them one of my things is God is my compass. I refer to him as my compass. You know, because I pause for a minute to like, I'm not so quick to rush into things no more. Because it may look all hunky-dory and it's like, oh, we, I can get this, I can do this. But what is it? What really is it? Yeah. You know, what's really there for me, you know? And how will it affect me? These are the type of things you got to pause and think about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, instead of just running headfirst into yeah. something, as we all have done in our younger days, just chasing money or yeah. chasing women or chasing getting high, you know, and it just ends up fucking your whole life up oh yeah trust and believe indeed it does yeah it's nice to have a little bit more of a grounded yeah moral compass these days indeed. a lot less desire going on too 
Yeah. So, and, you know, unless you're reaching for shit, unless you're bound to get your hands smacked. Right. The temptation ain't, the temptation is not as great. You know, when you're young, mm-hmm. you know, everything was, let's move fast. <laughs> let's just, it's there, let's get it. To where now it's like, you sit and you pause and you look at things differently, you know? So I'm just like, I, I just, like I said, I move, people think I move fast, but I actually move slow. Yeah. That's why I tell them, I said, yeah, it look like I'm moving fast, but I'm moving <laughs> slow. <laughs> <laughs> a little more direct, you know, a little more uh, right. focused movement. It helps a lot. Yeah. I try definitely. to, I try to sl- move as slow as I can throughout the day, but sometimes it's not really the easiest task, but yeah, it, it definitely comes through a lot cleaner when I right. move more slowly, more confidently, more directly, as opposed to just scrambling on things. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I can say, you know, when I, when I was talking about how you come across and you meet people and see, it's like, you know, it was cool. It was cool meeting you, you know, when we was in Cali and we talked and it was cool meeting because the energy and your vibe was like on point. You know, it was, and you know, we was sitting, um, we was talking and, uh, I don't know if it was you or, or I that brought up, um, what's his name? On Gaia. Um, oh, on Gaia. The, the guru. Sad guru. Did I bring up sad guru or Ramana Maharshi? Um, was that it? Not Ramon Harnashi, but it, he was his mentor. Yeah. Oh, Ram Das. Ram Das. Ram Das. Ram Das. Yes, Ram Das. I love Ram Das. Ram Das is cool. Yeah. Ram Das is cool. And I was like, that's cool because you're probably one of the other, outside of, I don't know if you know Tim French. Tim, he mm-hmm. works up in the um, warehouse at CT. Yeah. And it was cool because when I met him too, it was like we talked about these spiritual people, you know, the spiritual gurus and the life um, of just their teachings and things like that. So, you know, and it's it's cool to to be able to meet people that's when you meet people like when I met you, I, instantly you know that. They was on a, that that path is like they're they're looking to change their lives. They're they're yeah. looking for something bigger than themselves, um, because most people you sit and talk to they don't talk about the spiritual perspective of their lives and or anything. And not to say they're not looking to change, but a lot of them are scared to change. A lot of them don't sit and say they don't. They, I get they don't know how to change. Yeah. But when you said when I was talking to you, I was just like, he he been on he been on the journey before. <laughs> he been on the journey before because, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, man. No, yeah. I appreciate that, and I feel yeah. the same way with with you. You yeah. know, you, there's certain people you run into now that just are a little more awake. Yeah. And you can tell right away the way they talk, the way they carry themselves. You're like, oh. Hi right there. You yeah, know, there's, right. There's this connection behind the persona that gets made mm-hmm. uh, where we both, kind of, you know, you can kind of instantly recognize, like, I, I'm not identified with this player character, right? This yeah. is just a role I'm fulfilling currently that <laughs> I'm not super attached to anymore. Right. And, um, yeah, and so it's nice to meet. It's few and far between. But it's oh, yeah. nice when you come across another person yeah. like that, like what you call maybe a spiritual seeker or somebody. Yeah. Seeking enlightenment, that kind of thing. Yeah, that you can sit and talk to. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's an energy, man, and it happen. You, you notice it immediately. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's wild stuff. But yeah, I appreciate it. Oh yeah, definitely. I was, I was like, cool. You know, to do so, to meet you, and to be here, like, you know, to be able here to sit here and talk and be on the podcast with you. So, no, it's, a, it's a blessing for me. I, I'm thankful. Like, like I said, everything for me is. I'm grateful yeah. for the people I come across, and and they don't. It don't have to be a, a, the spiritual connection. It's just sometimes in the self and passing by. It's like you have to be look at 
it from so many putting yourself in other people's shoes, yeah. so to speak. And that's one of my big things. Like, I've had, we was on a show. The problem is that we was on a show. I was at the, when we did the match with um, Steph Curry them. Okay. And I was with some guys from Sweetwater. And we were walking to go to the um, Taco El Gordo. And it was a guy out there. You could tell he was hungry. He wanted, you know, he didn't have no food or whatever. He was asking for money. And I seen him. And so I put our money and I gave it to him. And one of the guys said, you too generous. <laughs> too generous. And I said, what do you mean too generous? He was like, you know, they out here, they, they make a choice. I said, you're right. They made a choice. Just like you said, they made their choice. I just made a choice. Yeah. My choice is to not judge nobody. Because you don't know their story. You don't know what they've been through. We all have our ups and downs. So it was one of them things where I'm not going to never look at nobody in a sense of because they're homeless or they're asking for money or anything like that because I, too, was homeless before. Yeah. You know, I, too, was homeless. So I know, you know, I made a choice to live a certain way. And I found myself homeless, you know. So it was one of them things where I'm never in a position to judge. And I was, and I, you know, later when we got back, I pulled him to the side and I spoke with him. I said, "Look, I said you may look at things different than people or, or however." I said, "But I always give." Yeah. I always give because things are given to me. I'm here. I got things that are given to me. Yeah, I may work for it. Okay, but nevertheless, there are other things in my life that has been given to me that's been blessed. So I'm going to give back to somebody, regardless to what position they may be in or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, so with that being said, I was like, you need to find yourself. Like I told him, I said, you need to find yourself when it comes to these type of things. I said, because... Be grateful for that you're able to be working and have whatever it is that you have. So, you know, I just, I don't know, I, it was that, that day, it kind of, it rubbed me the wrong way that people, that's why I say it's not the world, it's the people in the world. Yeah, well, they're sick, right? Yeah. And they're, they're coming from this selfish perspective. Yeah. And for me, it's always, like, dealing with people, it's always compassion. That's the only... It's the only logical emotion or like not I don't even like to consider that an emotion, but the logical expression that you can really give to other people is compassion because everyone's doing their best with what with the hand they've been dealt kind of cliche, but it's true. And um, like you said, who are we to judge? Right? Yeah. I mean, I'm only doing my best. I know how many flaws I have. Um, right. I'm, I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, but yeah, we we walk around and we we love everyone around us when we can, because otherwise, you know, those homeless people would starve if it wasn't for yeah. a few of us breaking through those barriers and that right. fear and like uh, you know giving an expression of love like that. Right. That's really yeah. you know that's keeping those people alive while they're going through one of the hardest moments of their existence. Yeah, and that's real. Yeah. So, you know, I do it because I definitely, I just, I understand. I like, even though I came from a loving family, a good family, and at the end of the day, you know, it's the choices that I made that put me in the position that I, I, I was in. Yeah, karma. Then, yeah, so it was at the end of the day. I was like, and like I said, lessons, life lessons, and... If you don't take anything from that and begin to apply it to how you want to become better and how you want to live your life, I mean, you stay stuck. Yeah, you stay stuck, and it's and it's and it's that's one of the things. Like I read, <laughs> um, 
what is the guy? I thought I, so. Rum, it's another guy. I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but it was Alan Watts. No, not Alan Watts. Uh, Timothy Leary. Is it Timothy Leary? They he's were a, they were buddies. He's a doctor. He is yeah. a doctor, Jason. But. He talked about illusions, like how we get sick yeah. at the, the illusion of life. Yeah. The illusions that we that we kind of make up for ourselves. But in general, the, the life that we can find ourselves contemplating what's reality and, and, and what's not, you know? Yeah. And everything can, can appear as an illusion in a sense to where we end up getting lost. Well, yeah, because you, the only thing you ever experience in this life is, is your own mind, right? You, you have this, this concept of like your sense precepts feeding you tr like honest information, but it's, it's really, it's limited information right. about what's happening outside of your body and how you perceive that. And then that's all mixed together with your bias and your opinions and your current emotional state. Yeah. Um, cause even just your biases and your opinions are going to, um, distort everything dramatically that your sense precepts are bringing to your consciousness, but also your emotions are extreme distorters of the truth. And so once you mix that in, you know, there's like three factors of, of complete like filtering of, of our experience of reality right. that we have to be able to, um, disentangle ourselves from so that we can see reality for more of what it truly is, which, and the more in my experience, the more you do that process of detangling yourself from all this bullshit, uh, the more loving everything becomes, the more you recognize like, Oh, I am like in heaven, not in like a figurative sense, but like an eternal metaphorical right. heaven sense. Like this really is like paradise. And it was hell for me for so many years because I made it into a hell. Right. right. And, um, yeah, because my perception of reality is reality. I mean, not subjective reality like like we're in this room right now, right. but like you know the 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 sense of like, well, what I feel and what I think is real, then it's real. Yeah, and it's real for me, and it's real for whoever else is dealing with dealing those. with it. Right. Yeah, and the narratives that we create within ourselves um, define what that reality is baseline is and most people that I meet have this foundation full of cracks and um, they they want to let the negative experiences in their life define them in a fashion that's not healthy uh, yeah and yeah it gets uh, it can get overwhelming and a lot of fear and hate can stem from that Whatever. those foundational limitations and it can really shatter your worldview yeah. and then you start lashing out at everybody screaming in traffic and <laughs> <laughs> and like you know yeah expectations that we have for the future right we create this preconceived um projection out into into time and space and then time and space catches up with our projection and there's all these minute differences and those cause us yeah. tremendous suffering Right, because it's it's always about acceptance and letting go instead of attachment. Yeah, that's truth. So his name is the guy. Name is Doctor Joe Dispenza. I love Joe Dispenza. Joe Dispenza. I said, yeah, Joe Dispenza. Fascinating. I mean, it was like listening to him was it was mind blowing. Yeah, it really was. It was yeah. mind blowing. And I put a lot of that to work. I put a lot of what he spoke about as far as with the brain and how, to, you know, the meditation aspect of really beginning to enlighten yourself to a whole new height yeah. of what's, what really is, you know. And I remember going... It was I think it was AWS. We did AWS at the at the Sands, and I remember 
because I was that's all I was listening to. Like <laughs> I, had, I had my headphones, I had my headphones, and I would just walk, walk, and I would be, I would be listening to them. And it was being in a whole different realm to me, of because I would constantly, I was constantly meditating, and I would like hone in on my senses of perception and understanding of what's going on around me yeah you know and i'm looking at different people and having conversations with with people and it was amazing of some of the conversations i would come out and i'm having these and i remember sean saying to me she was like what the hell where where the hell did you get this from (laughs) you know but um it was just an enlightenment to sit and listen to Joe Dispenza. Um, it was his, the series, of, I think it was a series about the um, the mind, the meditation, um, if I'm correct, when it came to, it wasn't the natural mind, but it was one of his series, I believe it was the supernatural, what okay. I'm looking at, I believe it was, but, he um he just put me in a in a whole different place with with understanding what the mind and the body can do. Absolutely, it's it's amazing what the mind and the body can do. Yeah, we're we're all capable of superhuman yeah. feats, man. Yeah, you know we but there's all this limitation that our brain has set to keep our body safe as yeah. well, right? So we uh, like the whole functioning at ten percent of our right. brain capacity, that kind of shit, uh, like we never really have the full capacity of our muscle strength either. Like there's those moments where you hear like a baby rolling under a car and then a woman's able to lift the car up because your muscles are capable of doing that, but they're also going to get severely damaged doing that. So it just prevents you from being able to do that in Mm -hmm. general, like subconsciously, which is really interesting how that works. But um, back to Joe Dispenza, like, it's really cool how uh, a guy like Joe Dispenza or say Andrew Huberman or um, Ram Dass that we were talking about, they have these amazing worldviews that they can eloquently describe to you. Right. And they just can inv- invite you right in and give you their rose-colored glasses. And it's like really nice to be able to see the world from these different perspectives of people. Yeah. Um, you know, like Joe Dispenza or Ram Dass, that they're... Their rose colored glasses are very nice to wear around right. the house. You know? <laughs> but it seems like the second they stop talking, they kind of they fall away a little bit and yeah. put my glasses back on, which I've been doing a damn good effort of making rose colored as well. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah, it, it is though. And I've had my conversation. I, I, I you know, I sh- um, a few people don't, you know. Didn't care, you know. I tell my listen to Ram Dass, A few people didn't care for Ram Dass, and and my thing was like, tell me why. Yeah. Um, because one was telling me he seems he he was well. The first initial was well, he was an atheist. Okay, operative word was. Yeah. And. You know, that don't make someone, it's no different from you being cynical about everything that you come across and and a wake-up call hits you. Something hits you uh, to wake you up from stop being that cynical prick or whatever, you know? Yeah. It's... It's life. We that that's that's whatever he whatever he felt at first of what he was going through of him why he was an atheist and that that's his issue. That's funny that that's the, that's the issue with Ram Dass. Yeah, it's that's the spiritual it. people right. I've ever heard speak in my life. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah. and so what? Yeah, I said, are you truly a believer? It's part of the journey, though, right. man. Yeah, is being like like seriously standing on your own two feet and saying like. I know that I know that I know, right? right? I think that's I think that's a big part of of coming to terms with reality as you watch that all break down in front of your eyes and you're just like, but I know though, you yeah. know, and it's like, but you don't know shit. Right. You can't know. There's no there's no telling, you know, people that though. You have to allow your ego to shatter itself 
because that's ultimately what happens right in that process of like atheism and materialism which i spent the first 33 years of my life doing that game and um and i'll you know not to say there's anything wrong with that i just consider it another attachment right you're attaching to your own moral or like um mental capabilities right mm. your own your own you're attached to your own sense precepts if you can't prove it to me through my sense precepts then i won't believe it's I real believe it's, real. it's like there's so much shit happening yeah that you you can't experience with your sense precepts all around you constantly and it's like those right. are those not real though mm -hmm. right? but it um yeah like i was raised without formal religion my father just uh, he took a lot of shit from it he just allowed me to kind of figure it out on my own. On your own, right. Yeah, and that was part of that process was being this narcissistic, atheistic character. Um, <laughs> right? Yeah, because well, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's true. It's, uh, But it, it was a necessary stepping stone that I had to go through to, to like truly understanding, you know, God and and God's plan, as it were. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah. No, it's... it's um. And it's a place where I said, you know, I could have been that. I can look at things and growing up where I grew up, and it don't matter where people go through hard times everywhere. Everywhere there's hard times, there are situations and stuff that is more dire than yours. Yeah, you know, it's and so and that's just how life is, the makeup of different societies, different cultures, we all go through some shit. And so it was, for me, I, I kind of tuned in and out of everything. Yeah. You know, what caught my attention, I tuned in. What caught my attention, I tuned out. <laughs> you know, it was one of them things like, it's, it's one of them things what you choose to like. Some people like cheeseburgers. Some some people don't like cheese on their burger. You know, it's the it's the taste of it all. It's the who, who's who, who's who you choose to deal with in life. You know, what things do you choose to take on? What what kind of, what what sacrifices is really the main thing about life in general when you willing to make sacrifices. And those sacrifices sometimes it comes with a heavy price. You know, I, one of my teachers, Miss, I love Miss Nye. Miss Nye was one of my favorite teachers, and she dealt, she taught a couple of things where she, she definitely taught about life. She was like a life coach, and so she's been all around the world. And I remember one day we was in class, and we came in, she had this saying on the board, life's a bitch, then it has puppies. <laughs> and I, like I was that. just like, wow. And I it always stuck with me. I'm just like All right. You know? I I caught it. I got it like off the top. Life's a bitch and it has puppies. Yeah. You know? There's a <laughs> and so when I tell people that it's like, what you gonna do? What what do you choose to do? Yeah. Because everything can be reinvented. There's a rebirth. Death is inevitable. Life's a bitch. But then it has puppies. <laughs> yeah, it's also a blessing, right? Yeah. You know, what you gonna do? Take it, you know, it's one of the things to where grasp the life that you have and appreciate it and live it. Mm. You know, I gotta go... I got to go meet my niece tonight. And she wants to talk. And Jason, I've had this conversation with her before. And she is disappointed with her life, saddened with her life. You know, you know, people talk suicide and mm. things like that. And so I've had this conversation with her before, and I'm like, I'm going to have it with her again, but, you know, I, I explained to her 
that what do you want me to do? Do you want me to sympathize or do you want me to be real with you? Yeah. What part do you want? It's like the classic girlfriend conversation. Yeah. Do you want me to fix it or do you just want me to listen to you? Listen to right? me. I said, because for me, and she know how I am, I said, when it comes to that, I'm going to keep it uncut. I'm going to keep it uncut because I don't know how to sympathize with that. Yeah. I do, but I don't. I'm not going to sympathize with that because I'm an enabler. If I sympathize, I feel I'm enabling. Yeah. Plus it's bullshit anyway. Right. I'm, I'm enabling. Yeah. What's wrong with life? What's wrong with your life that people and, you know, they talk about, I can understand why people take their life. Now, really? I, I can't. I mean, I understand we go through some shit, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I haven't had the thought of like, you don't want to fix it. That's it. That's all. Like, I told you, you don't want to fix it. And you, it's an easy fix. Because the simple part of it is looking at yourself. What do you want to change? Stop choosing bad relationships. You know? Stop choosing the people that you bring into your life that know that don't mean you well. And you feel that they take advantage. Yeah. You know? And I'm like... You're responsible for that. Nobody else is responsible but, but for you. But that's how a lot of people get caught up in what they get caught up in, that rut and having excuses. Somebody did this, somebody did that, somebody pointing fingers. I was like, damn. I said, let me give you an example. Take me, for instance. Came from a good family. My grandparents, great-grandparents, always been around them. My grand grandmother, my grandma Hickman was an educator, planted a great seed in me. My other grandmother, great educator, planted a great seed in me. My, both my grandfathers both worked, hard work and so forth. Worked with them when I went out to Arizona, all that. Didn't come from a bad environment. But guess what happened? I started making fucked up choices. Yeah. Can I sit up there and point my finger and say anything to them and say, Y'all didn't love me. Y'all didn't try to do this or what may have you. This happened and so forth. I was like, I could look at other situations and try to blame somebody for what I chose to do, the decision that I made. So all this time that I came from a good family, people that loved me, I was the one making it the bad decisions. I was the one always being locked up. I was the one always doing, committing crimes and living this certain particular life that didn't reflect anywhere where I came from. Didn't reflect any of that. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like we want drama when we're younger. Right. right? Like when I was a teenager, I tried to create so much drama <laughs> and violence and ridiculous, just like make things interesting. You know? Right. Yeah. And so I, I'm just like, and I'm just having, I'm telling her this to tell her like, we, and I did not made a choice when my brothers and was killed and I lost both my grandparents and, you know, all three of my grandparents, my grandmother and my grandma Hickman was still alive when I got out. But I said, all this came about and I had to pause. I had to pause. Guess what? I could have easily been angry. I could have easily said, I'm coming out. I'm finna go get the dudes that killed my brothers. I'm finna, I could have did any of that. Simply. That, that wouldn't have took no effort for me to do. Yeah. None. Because I could have easily said, I'm accustomed to this because I grew up this way. I've been around that all my life, so I'm finna go get revenge. I said, guess what I did? I had to pause. My son was 14 years old now. I went when he was a baby. Yeah. My mother just lost two children. I had to think about that. Then she had one in prison. I've been in prison for 14 years. For me to get out, to go and do something stupid because it would have been justified with an excuse. Yeah. Bullshit. Bullshit. I sat down and I paused for a minute. And had to ask myself, do I want to take my mother through that? Do I want to not be around my child? Do I want to 
not be there for the people that have been supporting me since the whole time I was in prison. It's choice. And I had to tell us it's choice. I said it was probably people who had doubt that I was going to be able to withstand this. Yeah. I said it's been 17 years now. 17 ain't been locked up, ain't had no incident, nothing, because I made a choice to change my life because I wanted to be the person I knew I was. It's simple as that. Just as quick as you can sit there and point fingers, have an excuses, be angry, what may have you, at the drop of a dime, you can change your whole thought process and say, this not me. Yeah. You know? So I sit and I hopefully, you know, she grasp it and appreciate that the fact that she is here and that she could do something about it, you know, it's one of them things to where people don't want to own up to their own shit. Yeah. Or they're comparing themselves to people that are much older than them or started at a different place than them, and it's like comparing yourself to anybody is a fucking big mistake. That's is, you know what? Yeah. You just hit that. Because <laughs> that's yeah. exactly what she said. Yeah. She exactly said what you said. She said, y'all doing this, y'all... You know, you finna buy a house and this is going on. I said, How old is she? She is yeah, she 31. 31? Yeah. It's no, she's 32. She's 32. Yeah. She's 32. So, you know, and I get it. Like I told I get it. I said, I'm not saying that your situation, and I, I understand that. I said, But it, it's a point in time where you have to change. Yeah. You know, the way that you think. I said, when they say thought, thoughts are everything, it's the way that you, how you think. Yeah. The universe only knows how to say yes. Yeah. That's a good way I, I, I heard it put, where you sit there and say, oh, I'm a fucking loser. I'll never amount to anything. I'm not going to, you know, this right. isn't going to happen. That's not going to happen. The universe goes, yes. But if you say, I'm, I'm great. I love myself. I'm so thankful to have this day. You know, everything's a blessing. The universe says, yes. Yes. Yeah, it yeah, is. It is. And uh and we're just the we're the things throwing meaning all over everything, right? We we, <laughs> we we slap all like all this meaning all over an otherwise meaningless universe. Right. And uh and then we get caught up in all of it and it's all illusion. It's all fantasy, right? Cuz if you just take all these sentient beings away, it's a bunch of rocks and and nuclear fusion happening, but like no inherent meaning. Right. Put us smack dab in the middle of it and we put values on different things and say this is right, this is wrong, and you know, this is good, this is bad. It's and, crazy. Yeah. It is and absolutely it's all crazy. our imagination. Right. It's all in our imagination. And so it's like you're only <laughs> you're doing good if you think you're doing good. Right. You know, who doing good compared to what? To what? Right. And if it's if it's compared to him, 99% of the population on the planet, you're fucking crushing it, right? And if you're just living in America, you're fucking crushing it. Super won the lottery there. So it's, uh, yeah, it, but it can get so lonely at the top of <laughs> yeah. the food chain like this. You know, you start comparing uh, different things like, uh, you know, clothing and sports cars and houses and, salaries and right. all of a sudden nothing's ever enough because you know you want to you essentially don't want to have what other people have you want to have more than than, the next than, than right. some of the yeah you want to have more than someone else to like validate your own existence you know which is in and of itself sickness to say like oh i'm not good enough unless i have more than x y and z right right that's crazy yeah i get asked that like Tony, why you know I get asked that question like Tony, why you don't got this you know like this car or, or anything you know I don't I don't get what I don't know I just growing up hustling I had those types like you say it was one of them things I got to get this I got to get that and so I said I I lost interest in having BMWs and all I lost interest that long time ago and. It's crazy that people really be on that. Like, they really be on the, the, the materialistic things of um, of life. And, for, you know, that's another thing with me is I want to be able... 
I take care of my family. I take my I got kids. I, I take care of my kids. Um, to and I also want them to understand like yeah, I can get y'all nice things if I want to. You know, um, y'all not scrubs or anything or whatever you want to title yourself. How you know if you want to say you scrub, y'all not. I just make sure y'all, y'all have y'all have the essentials. You got clothes on your back. Yeah. You got a house to stay in and so forth. And I don't care. You know, I don't care. I like I got a 2007 Lincoln out there. And I like, you know, it, it's okay. I put that's, I put rims on it because yeah. I like rims and stuff. <laughs> like I said, it's okay to have something nice, but it doesn't define me. Yeah. You know, it don't define me. So that's what I tell that I'm not going to go out and buy no, no damn, you know, new Audi or I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go buy no shit that's, that's like $120,000. Yeah. And it's crazy. I was looking at one of the, <laughs> the newer Teslas, man, and I was like, this is so much fucking money for a car. And I just don't care that much. Right. I just don't care that much. And it's, it's crazy. And I'm like, my, my um, brother, he want to go get I'm like, what you want to escalate for? Yeah. Them things is damn near a house. Yeah. And then another house payment every month just to fuel them. Yeah. That's why, <laughs> Jason, I... I've had, you know, I got a, a few friends. They got their nice cars and stuff, but I bust their bubble. Yeah, I have to bust their bubble. I don't got no car payment. I don't want no car payment. No moving forward. And if I go buy me a truck, I, the next thing I want is probably a truck because I like to go hiking and I, I, I camp. Yeah. So I'm gonna go buy one, and I'm not gonna have a when I go get it. It's not be gonna be nothing fancy. It's gonna be something where I can haul what I need to haul to get up to the mountains. That's it. That's all. And I'm gonna pay for it. I don't want no car note. I don't need nothing fancy. And I was in the car business, and I would sit up there and do deals sometimes. And I'm in my head, and I'm like, some people be coming in there knowing damn well they can't afford this car. I'm like, you trying to pay a $900 car note because you want to look a certain way? Yeah. I'm mean, like, uh, it's crazy. And like their employers will help them get that car note because yeah. now they own your ass. My dad used to always say that shit about construction. He's like, they, they'd come to him asking him to like co-sign or whatever, saying like, oh, he's good for the money. Yeah. You get him in a nice new Camaro or a Mustang or something like that. And he's like, uh, well, I need guys to stay late. I know you're staying late. You got that Camaro. Yeah. <laughs> you're fucked. <laughs> if I can own you now, you're going to be that my type, bitch. That type of shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is crazy that people sit and um, have all this to, to get them kind of car notes. And I be looking at some of these young young people. They be young people. They just they trying to fit in, trying to yeah. keep up with the Joneses. Yeah, that Instagram image, man. Yeah, you know, it's like those music videos that they would shoot, or um, even uh, cribs. They they would rent houses and rent cars and like. <laughs> front <laughs> <laughs> that's not their front some some account and some lawyer's property that he right. just rents he doesn't even live there because he's got three of them but you know they they act like it's their sports cars they, and their right. houses and everybody's trying to keep up with that it becomes it's the crazy. image right and that's horrible that is horrible that's like such a financial burden on people that's like because i know like i tell people oh i i could sit and tell like who's who when it comes to certain things, because a lot of the cars used to get repossessed. Yeah. You know, they get repossessed uh, because you can't keep up with the car notes. And it's crazy to me, but, you know, that's teacher's own when it comes out. I, I just don't see the importance to try to keep up with the Joneses. It's just, just um, you know, it shows the, the lack of character in a person a lot of times. Where they're trying to, instead of having a personality or like having some sense of self worth, they just um, export that to material possessions. Yeah. And go like, well, I got the thing, so that makes me cooler. And sure, and it does a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> if someone's got a sports car, you're like, yeah, I want to go for a fucking ride. Yeah. Uh, of course I do, man. But uh, at the same time, there's, you know, becomes empty real quick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. 
Definitely. And that's one of the things that I think, you know, for the overall picture though, Jason, I just I want to just I want to do something. I want to leave my mark in the world. Yeah. I want to leave my mark in the world. And that being of helping other people, um, being a good person in general to other people, you know. Um, I, I felt that, you know, I've I've done a lot and of you know bad things in my life, you know, um, and I'm still here. You know, I'm still here in. And deep down inside is, I need to fulfill that purpose. Yeah. You know, I need to fulfill that purpose. And, you know, I was talking to, like I was saying, I was talking to, talking to Diane today, and I was explaining to her, like, you know, I apologized to her um, before not looking at the situation in whole, you know, of... Um, not looking at things from her perspective when she was feeling a certain way because sometimes I don't like to drive all the time. Yeah. And so she felt the sort of, because anytime I asked her to do something, it was no hesitation to do it, you know. And I do other things for but the driving aspect didn't care. And so I, I said no. And it was one of them things to make her, she felt a certain way about it. So I didn't pause to like really look at why it made her feel that way. Right. And so when I did, I had the conversation with her like, I apologize. And to her, she was like, you just apologize to me because you just wanted. And I said, no, I said, I don't I don't apologize insincerely to people. I said, I'm the type of person I'm repetitive in things that I do. When it comes to reading and certain things and stuff, and I'm also sincere when I apologize. If I know that I said and I access and look at the situation from a different perspective once I settle how, get out of my my feelings or how I felt about it, I have to uh, access it to where I need to know where you is coming from. I need to know where the next person is coming from and how you was feeling. So when I broke it down to her, um, she understood, and I told her this for this reason because I said, when I tell, I tell, I said, I'm very serious about when it comes to me being the better version of myself. I said I, I'm saying this because I know that we we're flawed as people, and we have to take time to pause. And I, I, I I'm serious when I'm say that reflection is important. So I have to reflect on every day of my life when I. Look, go through what I could have been, that I could have done differently or what may ha whatever may, may, the situation may be, I want to make sure that I'm working on be, being a better person, how I conversate with my kids, how I conversate with somebody. And so my apology is sincere because I had to look at you was saying something to me and I didn't take it in to understand how you were feeling because it made you feel a certain way. Like, you, 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 you act, whenever I ask you, you always do, there's no questions. When, where, and what, how can I help you? Opposed to how I answered you, and it made you feel a certain way. So my whole thing is to become that better version of myself. These are the things that I work on to become a better person a better version of myself and to become transparent, you know, in the sense to be transparent of who I am as a person, you know, because sometimes it ain't always easy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it ain't always easy. And it's like, cause we all have, it's about, that's the one thing he talked about, Joe Dispenza of letting go of the ego. Yeah. You know, he, he, he talks about letting go of the ego and that's, what I'm working on of letting go of the ego because once that goes, it's like a whole new door opens up for you. Yeah, and then it keeps rebuilding itself in different images and fooling you. <laughs> <laughs>
Only the ego wants to uh, dissolve the ego. That one, um, I think it was Rupert Spira who said that. But uh, it's a fun game that it plays against itself first, and I'm still playing that game, and I don't know how to stop playing that game. (laughs) Um, I recognize that it's a method that I've become trapped in. And um, and that's the first step to getting out of a method. Yeah, is recognizing the trap of it. But it's uh, definitely a um, it's definitely a solid game to play. And yeah, it's it's a fucking mess of a ride. I'll tell you that much. I don't know how much longer I'm playing that game for. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, maybe lifetimes. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But yeah, it's a. Uh, and we've been chatting up for well over an yeah. hour now. I should get you out of here, bud. I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, it was. It was really good, man. I'm so glad I had you on the podcast. Um, yeah. Let me do a little wrap up here and get us the fuck out of Dodge, sir. Um, yeah. We have our good friend Antonio Hickman on the podcast. God's plan from the Raw Truth podcast. Check it out on Spotify. And, uh, of course, I'm Jason Froberg with To The Fullest. Uh, make sure you give us a like, subscribe, ring the bell. All that good stuff. Follow us on social media. Uh, follow my man, Antonio Hickman, as God's plan on social media. And uh, all the links will be in the description below. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Peace. Peace. Thank you for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here.